Good morning and welcome to our Athlete Soul educational webinar. Today we're going to be talking about transition from sport. But before that, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, my name is Miriam Blez. I am the founder of Athlete Soul, created this organization a year ago with a group of former athletes with the goal to help um, retiring athletes to transition out of sport but also raise awareness about the challenges of athletic retirement. Uh, I am myself a former athlete. I competed in the sport of synchronized swimming in two Olympics um, in Sydney for the French national team and in Beijing for the Australian national team. Um, after that, I worked in um, marketing, sponsorship and communication for a hotel company and eventually came back to the sport industry working with the British Olympic team before the London 2012 Olympic Games um, and eventually with the US Olympic team. Before Rio, I was the high performance director for a couple of years and, and then the CEO of the organization. So I've been to four Olympic Games. I retired twice from my sport. The first time was not necessarily my choice. The second time um, I actually decided to retire. So. I've got quite some experience with retirement and high performance and working with athletes. Um, and so this is why this is really uh, close to my heart, um, helping athletes with the transition and, and helping athletes so um, further its mission of, of uh, supporting uh, competing athletes, retiring athletes and, and former athletes. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna um, share my screen and we'll take you through this this presentation today um, where we're talking about transition to life after sport so the way this presentation is organized we're first going to be talking about the process of athletic retirement and then we'll talk about some practical tools uh, to mitigate the challenges that you may be facing when you retire and those practical tools are things that we use um, at Athlete Soul in our coaching program to help athletes um, through their transition. So at the end of the presentation, I will also talk about what is Athlete Soul, what are our services, and how do we help athletes through that process of transition, as well as help you with education and awareness and, and what to expect about retirement. So first, first part of this presentation, we are talking about the process of athletic retirement, and it is a process. There is the event of retirement, but then there is the process afterwards, which we often reference as the transition. Um, you'll hear former athletes talk about how was your transition. It actually can take you know several years to transition out of sport and, and really go through that grieving process. And I'll touch a little bit on this the grieving process in a minute. But first we're gonna understand what is this event of retirement. Um, it can happen by choice or it can happen um, without a choice, meaning you know you, you may be forced out of your sport or an event may end your career. So when it happened by choice, usually it's planned and it's expected and you've been uh, preparing for it. Um, Either because you retired, you decide to retire because you, you have achieved your goals or you are getting older, closer to a retirement age, uh, you're graduating from university and you know that you're not going to be playing professionally or simply you have lost the motivation for your sport and you decide that's it, I'm going to go do something else. So that's plan expected um, and usually it means a little easier retirement. Uh, when it's planned and expected. Now you can also retire and it's not your choice. And so as opposed to planned and expected, this time it's unplanned, it's sudden. It can be due to uh, personal factors that you may have control over, or it could be due to external factor. And I'll talk about these in a minute. So the personal factor typically will include a sudden career ending injury, it could be uh, multiple injury over time that eventually will uh, lead you to have to retire. Um, you could be deselected from your team. Uh, you didn't make the cut or younger athlete um, 
in this case, you know, could have been selected over you, or simply you're not able to continue to trade, you're not able to financially afford to continue to train and compete. Um, so those are all factors that you have a little bit of control over. Now, there are plenty of factors that you have absolutely no control over, and yet they can dictate the end of your career. So this could be cancella cancellation of events, championship, uh, exactly what we're seeing right now with COVID. You know, you're, there's, the season is ended earlier and you have no uh, control over that decision. Or it's an international competition that's postponed or canceled. Um, there is a change in the qualification process or the way um, they select the athlete in a team or into an event, and that will affect your position uh, in competing. Uh, also, you can have retirement from uh, a partner, if you're a tennis player, for example, or your teammates, which could lead in changes in your team or your team being unable to compete. So that could affect your position and your career and sometimes can lead to the end of a career. Um, there could also be decision from your government or your federation or your club that will lead to a possible early retirement. Um, for example, the boycott of the 1980 Olympic Games obviously meant that for the athletes who had qualified to those Olympics, they would not be able to attend. Um, and that happened more often than, than we think. Or, for example, recently when a federation, uh, sorry, a university decides to cut a program, a sports program from, from their, their athletic department, that means that your career um, is going to turn and, and change um, often for retirement or uh, perhaps in a different direction. It's important that you understand the event of retirement, how it comes about. Um, and all the different factors that can influence your retirement. And based on whether it is your choice or it's sort of forced upon you, your retirement may feel very different. And the way you handle it and the way you handle that transition process after retirement may feel very different. So now we're gonna talk about that process. Um, the athletic retirement, the transition after sport, can be similar to the process of change or the grieving process. It will be done over time. It will take quite some time to go through various emotions that eventually will lead you to accept that you are now a, reti a retired athlete. Um, so here we can see the typical curve um, that we see in the grieving process where you go through anxiety and then happiness and fear uh, perhaps depression, um, and eventually you go on an ascending curve and you, you finally move forward because you have accepted um, that transition. So athletic retirement is not very different from any other process of change, um, and it's not very different to a traditional grieving process where you go through all those emotions. We typically divide the athletic retirement into three phases, with the first one being the ending of the career, of your career, and this is what we just talked about in this event of retirement, how does it come about? And typically with that, um, there's sort of three type of emotions that will uh, come along with your en the ending of your career. It could be either excitement because you've been waiting for this and maybe you're tired and, uh, or you've achieved your goal and you're really looking forward to what's next. Or it could be um, anger, uh, frustration, bitterness, some, some more negative feelings because you may have not chosen to retire. And sometimes those, there could be indifference as well, especially if you have been burned out or if you're tired, um, it's really hard to react to that event. So that's the ending. The second phase is sort of what we call the descending phase, uh, mostly because it's associated with some pretty um, negative emotions, um, some that athletes are not always very comfortable with. Um, and so that, that phase could be pretty difficult to handle for a lot of athletes um, because you will go through uh, feeling of anger, you'll be upset, you may be scared, um, you 
may feel that if you do not do anything and you stay still, um, that things are perhaps going back to where they were. Or you may feel just extreme sadness, um, the loss of your sport. This is everything that you had. And um, often, if that sadness stays for quite a while, um, it can lead, lead to depression. So there are a lot of different um, aspects of your life that will be affected by all these emotions. Um, but what you have to know is those emotions are normal. And typically, all athletes that retire will go through a wide range of emotion. Um, and you need to accept that and go through it and process those emotions. I really encourage all athletes not to refrain and shove them aside like we used to do during an athletic career because they will come back. Um, they will come back to you perhaps later on in your life. Um, now, after this sort of a doom and gloom period, um, there is the ascending phase. And this phase is a little bit more positive because when you're going on the ascending phase, it means that um, you're not really stuck there anymore. You are ready to move forward. You are ready to, ex you have accepted that you are no longer an athlete, um, that you're retired and that you want to explore all those things. So there's a period of exploration. You're going to develop new identity outside of being an athlete. Um, and eventually you're going to start pursuing some of those new interests that you have that outside of sport. Um, so that's the process of, of the transition. Um, and like I said, this can last for um, a year or even a couple of years or even longer, much longer than that. You know, we can see athletes that will say, oh, well, you know, five years after they're retired or even 10 years after they're retired, they're still processing a lot of their emotion and figuring out what they're doing next. So just being prepared to the fact that this is, this is a long transition. You have been doing something in your life for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, and it will take some time to close that page, close that door, and move on to um, the next thing. And, and really, this relates to um, how you build your identity and how identity relates to sport. So as athlete, we have an athletic identity, um, and usually it's pretty uh, centered in our life um, and it's pretty impactful. Um, we usually call the athletic and we define the athletic identity as how closely do you identify yourself uniquely with your sport? So is your athletic identity everything in your life or is it just part of multiple identities that you have? The more closely you identify with your sport, um, the more difficult perhaps the transition out of sport will be. We're going to touch base a little bit on how identities as an athlete, um, typically you would have started your sport pretty early on. Um, often um, you specialized early or spent all of your energy in one sport and that's what makes you good and that's what makes you the best in your sport and reach the highest level. Uh, but this can lead to what we call identity foreclosure, which is basically solely identifying to you being an athlete. Um, and it, it's kind of a catch-22 because you need to be very focused on being an athlete to be competitive. But this is also what will make the transition out of your sport pretty difficult. So... If you specialize really early in your career, you fully focus on your sport during your formative years, which are your teenage years, with, where other, other uh, individual and young people spend time trying out new things, testing things, pushing boundaries, um, and forming their identity eventually out of that process. Every time they're pushing the boundaries, they're building their, their identity you haven't necessarily been able to do that through your teenage years and your, and your early adulthood. And as a result, when we remove your sport identity, you may feel that your whole uh, self, your self-esteem and your self-worth is also stripped as well. So often for athletes, um, there is no difference between who you are and what you do. So often, these two are associated together. 
who you are and what you do are the same thing. And so when you remove your athletic identity, um, it could be very difficult and it could lead to a crisis because you don't have um, uh, all the norms and rules that make you an athlete. Um, you don't have that. And so um, there are uh, multiple emotions that you may experience as a result of your retirement from sport and during the process of transition. Um, and these are just examples of things that you can feel. Uh, it doesn't mean we're going to go through them and it doesn't mean that you're going to experience everything, but that gives you an idea of what to expect. So loneliness and depression or, or uh, sadness, sometimes being overly enthusiastic, especially when meeting new people. So athletes have a lot of energy. Um, typically they're go-getters. And so when they move into um, other avenues and other interests, they will transfer that enthusiasm to other things, but sometimes it could be, it could put off other people. Um, so too much or too little energy, uh, a, a loss of confidence and self-esteem, sometimes uh, loss of your self-worth. All these things can also lead to risk of addiction and social disorders. So risk of addiction because you want to finding in other areas what you have felt um, as an athlete or perhaps you want to um, tame those negative emotions that you're feeling whether it's sadness uh, anger uh, loneliness frustration anxiety uncertainty um, you you don't really want to feel all those things especially if those are not necessarily things you have felt earlier as an athlete and so they're you know, you may turn to uh, consumption of certain things um, to tame those emotions, um, or you may experience through some risky behaviors, uh, again, to uh, not have to deal with those emotions. Um, there can be also a misunderstanding from your families and friends, and that's very, very common, much more common than we imagine, because in, in the mind of your family and friends, you um, as an athlete, you are very strong-minded. Uh, you are strong-willed. You have dealt with a lot of difficult situation, with stress, with competition, with travel, and so you should be able to deal with your transition from sport. Um, and so often there's a misunderstanding from them on why you're not able to cope with this specific situation. And it's okay. It happens to plenty of athletes um, to be struggling with the transition from sport. So I would really encourage any athletes to reach, in, reach out to former athletes who've gone through the transition and talk to them um, about the challenges that you're experiences, experiencing um, because your family and friends may not always understand where you're coming from. They will see you as a huge success um, and you may not see it from the same perspective as they have. Uh, the transition may impact your social network and you know your 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 teammates probably would have been most of your your friends and so if you're retired and your teammates are still competing then it's kind of difficult to connect on the same level um, you may feel that they're still in the boat and still pursuing something that you're not in um, and there could be also a misunderstanding between your teammate your former teammates that are still competing in you who is retired um, and then lots of feeling of uncertainty, um, confusion, ambiguity, uh, perhaps even anxiety. So these were all the emotions that you may, um, these were all the emotions that you may experience as you go through that period of transition. And we're gonna touch a little bit on what we call ambiguous loss and in unresolved grief. And the reason we're touching on this a little bit is because this is something that could happen to um, athletes who have lost their season um, or are getting stuck in that, in that moment of sadness, um, in that period of sadness in, in the transition curve. So ambiguous loss often um, happens when you, are, you have lost someone or something, um, but there is no end, clear end. Um, what I mean by that is, for example, someone who has had an accident in, is in a coma. They're not really there anymore, but 
they're not gone, and so you can you cannot proceed with uh, your grieving um, as you would normally do if the person perhaps had died. Um, so this is something that can slightly be applied to an athlete that has lost a competitive season or not being able to uh, complete uh, their cycle, uh, their competitive cycle. So if you've missed a competition because of the boycott or if your season was canceled because of COVID, um, you really need to be able to deal with, with the, the fact that um, it was it was taken away from you without you having any control and you're going to have to figure out how you can do your uh, move on, move forward with your grieving process. Um, and then unresolved and complete, complicated grief um, is basically a, a grief that um, see you stuck in the moment of depression and you don't feel like you can move forward. You're, it, it, it's basically a, a grieving that lasts for much longer than, than typical, um, where you are being stuck in that moment of sadness and you can't move forward and it's really impacting um, your daily life. So those things are two things to watch for um, it's from the mental health side when you're going through your transition. There are obviously a lot more, a lot, there are obviously a lot of other changes that will happen um, as you transition out of sport. And so here we're going to be talking about uh, some of the physiological changes. Um, your exercise level is going to change and this will impact um, your hormonal system as well. Um, if you stop exercising abruptly, and if you go from 30 hours of practice a week to nothing, um, it is likely to decrease your endorphin and level of adrenaline, and this, in, in, this will change the chemistry of your body, and it can have an impact on your, your mental health. So watch out for the changes in exercise level. Watch out for your nutrition. Um, you're going to have to decrease uh, probably your calorie intake because you're not exercising as much. Uh, your body is going to change in terms of its body composition. You're likely to lose. Uh, weight or in terms of muscle mass, but you're likely to uh, gain more uh, body fat. Um, so these can lead to um, challenges with body image um, and sometimes also some unhealthy food behaviors. Uh, you sleep may be affected. Um, if you exercise less than what you was used to, that might impact your sleep. But also if you've been traveling a lot as an athlete during your career, um, you may be uh, dealing with some challenges with, with jet lag. And so that can, um, you know, you may have difficulty uh, figuring out what your sleep routine is after sport. And also the fact that you, you will not have the same daily routine and structure and schedule around your day may also impact your sleep routine. Um, rehab, if you're ending your career with a career ending injury or if you have things that are, um, that are overuse injuries, you will need to take care of these and have a rehabilitation plan in place, uh, possibly so if it's your therapist regularly and definitely uh, continue to do some strength work so that you can maintain your body. Um, Women will have faced some specific challenges that relate to their uh, menstruation uh, and that could could impact their productive system. So especially for athletes that work, that are competed in aesthetic sport where uh, body image is important and you have to keep a very strict uh, control over your weight, uh, you may see some, some long-term impact. Um, and then finally, uh, doping can also affect um, your life after sports. So, um, and, and this is a pretty, a secretive to it's a pretty uh, difficult topic to talk about. A lot of, um, of athletes will not share, even after they retire, um, they have been doping. And so we have very little understanding of the long-term consequences of doping, although we know um, they are some, and so something to watch for. Other challenges that you may face, uh, we, we touched on it a little bit, you know, social challenges, the loss of your of your network, 
uh, the loss of uh, your sense of belonging to a team or a group or um, a special unique group of people. Uh, financial hardships, you may not have planned for your transition. Uh, you, may not, you may not have a safety net or a job that keeps you going at least for a period of time through the transition. Uh, it will have an impact on your personal relationship, whether it's your relationship with your family and friends, uh, your partner or your spouse. Uh, the impact on your professional career. If you kept um, uh, studying and you pursued an education in parallel to your athletic career, uh, it might not be as difficult, but for those of you that had to choose, um, it might be uh, more difficult to transition into a professional career after your athletic career. So we just talked about all the different challenges that you may or may not face as you transition out of sport. And now we're gonna talk about um, some example on how you can mitigate those challenges. So these examples are directly taken out of some of our program, especially our transition coaching program. They're not exhaustive, obviously, and there's a lot of other people out there that have great ideas on what you can do um, to prepare for the transition. Our first recommendation to everybody, every single athlete, and this is a message that we really try to pass on to uh, your coaches and your support staff, um, families and friends, anybody that is involved with athletes, is that the best way to transition out of sport is to be aware, one, aware of what to expect, what the challenges are, and then um, so your education about it. Uh, the more you can be prepared, the more you can learn about what that means and what others have faced, the better you will be able to handle the transition. So education, you know, on athletic retirement, its challenges, what to expect. And, and if you feel as an athlete that you don't have the time and energy to think about retirement, which is pretty common, um, let someone else do it for you. If you have parents or friends or people in your network that you feel could really ga um, uh, gain from being educated for you and then they can help you through the process that's also a different way to do it um, if you feel that by spending time educating yourself you're going to be distracted from your sport then let someone else do it for you uh, think about a financial safety net for yourself for the transition um, and, and educate yourself on what that could be. Um, when I say financial safety net, it doesn't necessarily mean saving money on the side or your transition out of sport. It means having a solution that will work for you for a period of six months to a year after you retire so that you can see things coming. So it could be, you know, you, you decide to go back to live with your family for a while so that you can save on rent um, and you can have their support. Um, I would encourage anybody that want to do that to make sure that this is a, a subject that you uh, talk about with your family beforehand, before retirement actually happens. It's always good to have those conversations before you're in the middle of, of pretty difficult uh, emotions. Um, or, you know, you decide to put some money on the side, or you could also decide that you're going to tie, you're going to take a, um, a job that will support you through your transition. Uh, that may not be the job that you want to do down the road, but at least will support you um, as you see things coming. Um, and then formally create a transition system for yourself. And these are, will be individual supporters that have specific roles that will help you through that transition process. And I will touch on this uh, in detail uh, in a minute. And finally, develop a more uh, balanced identity when you're an athlete and when you're still competing. So you want to make sure that you're not solely focused on being an athlete, but you have other things that you're looking at, whether um, it's other interests, it could be sport, it could be other sport interests, it could be um, academic or professional interest, uh, volunteering, um, spirituality or religion. You want to have something else outside of your sport that um, helps you being a little bit more balanced and not solely focused on what you do um, as an athlete. So, 
Second point, we talked about education and being aware of what to expect. The second thing is you need to really consider a deceleration plan from the moment, from the event of retirement for, you know, the six months after you retire. And, and the goal of this deceleration plan is to keep you moving. And why is that is because as I mentioned it before, if you stop exercising all at once, you are likely to face some pretty dramatic chemi chemical changes in your body. And those chemical changes can lead to depression and some mental health issues. And so the more you can keep moving, the less your, your mental health will be impacted by the, um, the hormonal changes in your system. Um, so you want to have a deceleration plan, just like you do a warm up at the beginning of your training. You want to do the same thing as you come out of your sport. Um, so you want to uh, create a holistic deceleration plan. You want to look at your exercise level, your nutrition intake, your sleep routine, and you want to maintain a daily structure. If you have some sort of routine every day after your sport is over, um, it will help you. Uh, sort of continue to have some sort of normalcy in your life. Um, and then in that desolation plan, you need to include uh, your rehab routine or some sort of, of strength training to maintain uh, a little bit, a base um, physical level. The second, the third pause, right? So remember, uh, educate yourself, create a desolation, desolation plan, you have to process your emotions. And, and you want to make sure that you don't push those emotions away. Um, you know, you accept it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be scared because you don't know what's coming. Um, it's, it's, those emotions are uncomfortable. You are probably not used to having those emotions as an athlete, um, but it's okay to have them. In, to accept those emotions because if you don't, um, you, you may end up in a crisis situation and this is what we're trying to avoid. And by crisis, I mean either um, getting into too much drinking, uh, drugs, um, even idea, um, thoughts of suicide. We've seen plenty of examples of athletes who uh, um, have to deal with all of that after they, are, they retired from their sport. So you want to process them emo those emotions, whether it's um, talking with others, um, seeking some, some specific help. So yeah, I'm listing a few things that you should be aware of before your retirement, you know, where to find crisis prevention contact numbers. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about an app in a minute that can help you with that. Um, that's called the Athlete Mental Health Link app. Um, and so, for example, um, this app can help you uh, learn more about mental health challenges, strategies to help you with your mental health, and it also has all of the phone number to reach um, if you're ever in a crisis situation. This app is free. Um, you can download it in the uh, Apple or Android um, store, and you can use the uh, athletes or co code to access everything for free. You can find it on our website. Um, as well. So that's one resource. Um, think about your mindfulness and your, and your mental wellness. You want to make this part of your daily um, process and routine, whether it's um, doing some meditation or spending time with others, spending time in nature, journaling. There's journaling. There's plenty of different things that you can do to help your, your mental wellness. Um, and again, this is really important in, uh, in a way of, of avoiding uh, a potential crisis. Uh, now we're talking again about the transition support system. And I think this time I'm going to go in detail um, on the transition support system. So this system is supposed to be a formal way to help you through your transition. So you would uh, create a group of individuals uh, around you that would fill a specific role um, that can be of, of help while you're struggling in different areas of your life. Um, so you would want to have, here are some examples, but you could create different roles uh, if you felt that these, these were not appropriate, but 
you know, a champion, someone who is uh, basically championing what, who you are and what you do and um, sort of boost you from a confidence perspective. You could have a friend that is a non-sport related friend, so someone that you're not going to speak about your sport with. It's sort of like a, a way to go hang out with someone that doesn't know anything about your past and will just like be there to um, have fun with you. Uh, you can have a mentor. A mentor is someone that will help you from a professional perspective. Uh, a coach. Um, so not a, not, not a sport coach. In this case, I'm talking more about a life coach, someone who will challenge your belief, but also help you look at your situation from a different angle and a different perspective. Um, and finally, you could also have a confident. So the confident compared to the friend is someone who knows about your sports situation, understands it, um, and can sort of listen to what you have to say and also give you some perspective. Um, so the transition support system, I would encourage every athlete to set it up before they retire. And you want to identify the people that would fill out those different roles and speak to them uh, about what you're expecting from them um, and how they could help you through your transition. So how often do you want to meet with them or do you want them to be the one reaching out to you to check in on you? You want to define that formally and let them know what you're expecting um, and, and what their role is in helping you through your transition. We talked about uh, processing your emotion and giving, giving yourself some space for these negative emotions. Um, you have typically something that you have not accepted when you were an athlete um, because you were trying to refrain from feeling pain or the hardship on, on the field or on the court. Um, here you want to make sure that you're able to uh, learn those emotions and process them, not let them linger with you. Okay, you don't want to be stuck in one place with those emotions, but you want to be able to uh, uh, feel them and move on from them. Next step is to uh, switch your mindset. Um, you want to move from the mindset of being an athlete to, you know, next. And this was really involved um, uh, being humble and going back to that process of learning. You're coming from an area where you were an expert all your life and now you're going to likely be uh, at the bottom of the learning uh, path uh, in a different area. And that's okay. A lot of people go through this, whether they're athletes or not, you go through life transition your entire life. So you want to make sure that you approach this phase with a growth mindset, meaning that you want to learn, you are open to learning and you are not stuck in, in one way of doing things. This means working on your limiting belief, but also your balance identity and your perspective on your life. So uh, your limiting belief, meaning that often as an athlete, you think that you're only good in your sport and in, not necessarily in other areas. However, you have developed skills throughout your journey in sport that will be beneficial in other areas of your life. And so it's switching your, your perspective and the way you look at your career to understand that you can use all of this and you have all of the tools already to make that transition. You just need to figure out how you're going to do that. Um, but really as an athlete, you know um, how to look at a problem, how to put a strategy together, and finally how to execute the strategy. That's what you have done your entire life as an athlete. And so this is what you're going to be doing uh, during your transition out of sport. We're going to talk about your balance identity. Um, as an athlete, often the only identity that you have is the athlete identity. And we, we call that the, uh, the source lump identity. So the athlete identity is the, is the bigger part of your life and every, everything else is sort of inexistent. Um, and so what you're trying to do during your career is develop other aspects of your life so that when you retire, um, you have other things to fall on, even if you remove the athletic identity. 
So you want to look at your hobby, your family, uh, your professional career, uh, perhaps your spiritual life as well. Um, and you have to remember when you retire, your athletic identity is not really gone. You once, if you were an athlete, you will always feel like this was part of your life and that you are an athlete, but you're just adding other aspects to your life. You're making your, your life uh, richer by doing so. Um, we also really encourage athletes who are retiring to spend some time celebrating their career. And this will really help with your grieving process. You want to spend uh, some time, some months, or, or even throughout a year uh, looking back at your career and everything that you have learned and gained from your career. Um, your proudest moment, um, your best memories, the people that you have met, that you respect, and um, friendship that you have created, um, looking at pictures, um, some of the results that you've achieved, even if you haven't achieved everything you wanted, there are numerous ways uh, throughout your career um, that there are numerous, even if you haven't achieved everything you wanted, there are many times throughout your career where you um, have positive outcomes and a lot, uh, you have learned a lot from. And so you want to really celebrate those moments. So actually in our program, we, we do include a session specifically for career celebration where we ask athletes to reflect on um, all the things I've just talked about, you know, your sporting achievement, your best moment, um, but also uh, feelings, that, positive feelings that you associate with your sport, images that you have in your head about your sport, positive images, um, maybe some of the biggest challenge in, in be formal in highlighting how you have overcome those challenges. Um, and, and you can create a celebration board, you could create a video of your career, a scrapbook, or even just send thank you cards uh, to some of the people that have contributed to your career. All these little things together um, helps you process your transition, uh, and slowly changing your perspective on, on your career and your specifically your retirement from sport. And then also by identifying transferable skills that you have and, and your strengths as a person that will help you um, figure out how you're gonna move forward and change your mindset post sport. So here are examples of tools that we use to assess uh, transferable skills and strengths after you retire. So we use something that's called Ikigai, which is basically um, the intersection uh, of, of what you love, what the world needs, what you're passionate about, and what you're good at. And by finding, figuring out what is at the center of that, um, you are able to fulfill your personal uh, purpose. Um, the transferable skill inventory tool is a little bit different because it, it's, a, it's a tool that helps you identify very detail in, in, in great detail uh, what your uh, transferable skills are from perhaps a more professional way um, to life after sport. These were a list of the different things that you can do from a mindset perspective to help you with your transition. Um, and then finally, the last piece is career development. Um, and the goal here is to accelerate your professional transition. Um, so accelerate that transition from athletics to your next career. Um, and so in that stage, we, at, we often tell athletes to look at personal and professional branding, how they slowly, how will they slowly shift from this personal athletic image that they have to a more uh, professional image. Um, expand your, your professional horizon, you know, uh, through volunteering or internship or taking different type of jobs to figure out what you want to do next. And it's okay to do multiple things and perhaps uh, go through, the, uh, go down a route that may not be necessarily what you wanted and what you end up doing eventually, but at least you've tried and you crossed that one off and you can move on to the next one. Um, networking, connecting with, you can really use uh, the former athlete network. You can also use your 
um, school alumni network. Um, so create a um, last long, long lasting relationship to help you uh, figure out what your career is next and how you can enter that, that industry. Um, we talked about transferable skills already. Um, look at your elevator pitch. Um, what are you going to say to someone that you meet now? How are you going to talk about your career? And then how are you going to talk about what you're doing next and what's coming next for you? Uh, learn about business etiquette and communication. Um, as athletes, we are usually pretty straightforward. Uh, often pretty casual. It's not necessarily something that goes well in the business world. So you want to make sure that you understand how to switch your communication to be a little bit more formal, a, a bit more adequate to the industry that you are going to go into. And this is the last piece of um, tool that I, am, I was going to present today. So we talked about um, being prepared, being aware of what to expect educate yourself of what, um, on the transition. Um, we talked about processing your emotion, not refraining from feeling those emotions. We talked about uh, creating a desperation plan so you can avoid crisis and have some sort of structure in your life. We talked about switching your mindset and developing identity outside of your sport. And finally, we talked about career development and how you can prepare for your next career. Um, so I hope that was helpful. I'm going to touch really quickly on what is athlete soul. Um, and then I invite you to uh, reach out to me uh, with any questions that you may have, or if you want to learn more about what we do. And um, I'm not going to touch a little bit about um, athlete soul and what we do and what we offer um, to athletes in transition. So we are a nonprofit organization. We were funded by a group of former athletes from various sports. We actually were started last year in 2019, and our goal is to provide independent support to retiring athletes. Like I said at the beginning, uh, we help athletes through the transition, but also our mission is to raise awareness about the challenges of athletic retirement. So why are we unique? Well, like I said, we're founded and run by former athletes. Uh, we are a volunteer-led organization. We're not for profit. Our goal is not to make a living off the transition of, of athlete. Um, we're really coming from the side of we've been, we've been in your shoes. We know how it feels and we want to help you through that process. So you do not repeat some of the challenges that we've had. Uh, we are separate from sporting organization. We offer a holistic approach to the transition. So we're looking at all aspects of transitioning and, and not necessarily just the professional part and how you can get into your next career. We're also looking at your physical changes, your emotional well-being, um, and, and your career transition. Um, and finally, our services are available to all elite athletes, and that means collegiate athlete, Olympian, professional athletes of any sport. Um, as long as you have spent, um, if you have spent a certain amount of time in your sport, you are likely to face some of the challenges of retirement when you leave that sport. And so uh, if you face those challenges, we, we are here to help you. We offer three services, education and awareness with, um, virtual uh, events and resources. We also offer transition coaching uh, during the transition portion. Uh, and finally, we have a lot of uh, networking uh, event as well to support you after you have transitioned out of sport. Um, so this is the end of today's webinar. I hope it was um, informative and um, that you've learned some tools that you can implement to prepare for your transition. If you have any question, um, I uh, encourage you to email me at Miriam, M-Y-R-I-A-M, at athletessoul.space, um, or visit our website at um, www.athletessoul.space. Um, all of the information is on our website. This webinar is also, will also be available on our website, um, and you can find my contact details on the website as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day.